Venture with me into the perplexing tale of the Black Dahlia, a mystery steeped in darkness and intrigue, as we explore the events of January 15th, 1947, when the lifeless body of Elizabeth Short was discovered in a vacant lot. Prepare to be drawn into the enigma. So grab your favorite glass of champagne. Make sure your doors are secure and cozy up. For the secrets we're about to uncover are as chilling as they are captivating. Step into the Noir Syndicate to unravel this twisted tale that we call the Black Dahlia, the Damsel, and the Devil. This is Inky Noir. Champagne Mysteries. Where we delve deep into the shadows, the past, to uncover secrets long buried. Join us now as we journey through the twist and turn of the enigmatic tales surrounding Elizabeth Short, known to the world as the Black Dog. Elizabeth Short, born on July 29, 1924, hailed from modest beginnings in Hyde Park. Massachusetts. Her parents, Cleo and Phoebe Short, raised her amidst the quiet charm of New England. Elizabeth, often called Beth by those close to her, was one of five daughters in the Short family. Elizabeth Short's tale begins with her father, Cleo Alvin, a United States Navy sailor, and her mother, Phoebe May, a devoted housewife. The family, rooted in the humble origins of Maine and Massachusetts, faced a cascade of misfortunes that would set the stage for Elizabeth's haunting journey. In 1927, the Short family settled in Medford, Massachusetts, a seemingly tranquil suburb of Boston. Cleo Alvin, with dreams of prosperity, built miniature golf courses but those dreams crumbled with the devastating stock market crash of 1929. By 1930, his car was discovered abandoned on the Charleston Bridge, leading to the grim assumption that he had plunged into the Charles River, leaving his family to believe he was gone forever. Phoebe May, now a widow in all but fact, took on the role of bookkeeper to support her children. Elizabeth, troubled by bronchitis and severe asthma, underwent lung surgery at the tender age of 15. Doctors advised her to seek a milder climate to alleviate her respiratory issues, prompting her mother to send her to winter in Miami, Florida with family and friends. The early years of hardship and health struggles saw Elizabeth dropping out of Medford High School during her sophomore year. Her story, already marked by loss and resilience, was only the beginning. In the noir haze of her past, the echoes of these formative experiences would linger, setting the stage for the dark chapters that lay ahead. Her early years were marked by the typical struggles of the Great Depression a time when dreams were often overshadowed by economic hardship. In her teenage years, Elizabeth's journey took her to Medford, Massachusetts, where she lived with her mother following her parents' separation. Her father, Cleo, abandoned the family, a betrayal that left a lasting impact on young Elizabeth. 
in the twilight of 1942. A letter arrived at the doorstep of Phoebe Mayshore, a missive from beyond the presumed grave. It was from her long-lost husband, Cleo Alvin Short, who revealed he was very much alive, and it started anew in the sun-drenched climes of California. With a mixture of hope and trepidation, 18-year-old Elizabeth Short embarked on a journey to Vallejo, California, to reunite with her father she had not seen since she was but six years old. Cleo Alvin, now engaged in work at the Mare Island Naval Shipyard on San Francisco Bay, was soon embroiled in domestic discord with his daughter, leading to Elizabeth's departure in January 1943. Seeking refuge and stability, Elizabeth took employment at the base exchange at Camp Cook, now Vandenberg Space Force Base. Her sojourn there was short-lived, tainted by an abusive entanglement with a U.S. Army Air Force sergeant in mid-1943. Elizabeth fled to Santa Barbara, where her misfortunes continued. On September 23, 1943, she was apprehended for underage drinking at a bar. Juvenile authorities, perhaps too swift in their judgment, sent her back to Massachusetts. Elizabeth, however, was a spirit not easily confined, and she returned to Florida, making only sporadic visits to her family in Boston. During her Floridian interlude, Elizabeth encountered Major Matthew Michael Gordon Jr., a gallant Air Force officer. He proposed marriage while convalescing from injuries sustained in a plane crash in India, and she accepted. Yet, Destiny, ever the cruel mistress, intervened once more, and Gordon perished in a second crash on August 10, 1945. Amid the turbulent times, Elizabeth's sister Dorothea was engaged in the clandestine work of decoding Japanese messages for the war effort, adding another layer of intrigue to the family's wartime narrative. In 1946, Elizabeth relocated to Los Angeles, seeking the companionship of Army Air Force Lieutenant Joseph Gordon Fickley. Despite these challenges, she turned heads everywhere she went. Beth's wanderlust and aspirations for a brighter future led her to the bustling streets of Los Angeles in 1946 a city teeming with promise and peril. She sought to make a name for herself in Hollywood, dreaming of stardom and the allure of the silver screen. Her journey was fraught with the typical trials of a young woman in a new city, navigating the glitzy yet treacherous landscapes of post-war Los Angeles. Her life intertwined with various figures of the city's nightlife and aspiring entertainment industry, relationships that were as fleeting as they were mysterious. Among these acquaintances were men whose intentions were often as shadowy as the city's underbelly. Her striking black hair and deep soulful eyes captured the attention of all who crossed her path. You see, her dreams of Hollywood stardom were as vivid as the silver screen itself. The glamour of Hollywood held a seductive allure for Elizabeth, but it also cast a long, dark shadow. Her life in Los Angeles was a whirlwind of fleeting relationships and broken promises. She navigated the murky waters of a post-war city, often finding herself in the company of those who promised much, but delivered little. In the days leading up to her demise, Elizabeth's life seemed to take even a more enigmatic turn. She was last seen alive on January 9th, 1947, at the Biltmore Hotel in downtown Los Angeles, where she had met a former lover. As she stepped 
into the night. The city's lights flickered like stars in a dark, foreboding sky. And she vanished into the night, leaving behind only whispers and speculation. Then came January 15, 1947. A date forever etched in infamy. In the early morning hours, a passerby walking along Norton Avenue in Lemert Park stumbled upon a sight so gruesome it seemed unreal. There, in a vacant lot, lay the lifeless body of Elizabeth Short. Her body had been severed at the waist, drained of blood, and posed in a grotesque manner. The scene was a macrobe tableau, a nightmarish vision that sent shockwaves through the city and the nation. The investigation into her murder became one of the largest in LAPD history, yet it remains unsolved to this day. The list of suspects reads like a who's who of the seedy underbelly of Hollywood, from disgraced doctors to shady businessmen, each with their own dark motives. Theories abound, but concrete answers remain as elusive as ever. As we delve deeper into the haunting enigma of the Black Dog, the shadows reveal a myriad of suspects, each with their own secret and dark desires. The labyrinth of this investigation has seen many potential culprits, their names whispered in hushed tones and scrawled in the annals of infamy. Leslie Dillon, a bellhop, an aspiring writer, emerged as a suspect due to his intimate knowledge of the crime details. In a bizarre twist, Dillon contacted the LAPD himself claiming to be conducting research on the murder for a book. His detailed descriptions of the crime scene and the manner in which Elizabeth's body was mutilated raised red flags. Dylan was detained and interrogated extensively, but discrepancies in his confession led to doubts about his involvement. Eventually, Dylan was released due to insufficient evidence. Those suspicions lingered. Mark Hansen, a nightclub and theater owner, was known to have close ties with Elizabeth Short. She had lived in his home for a period, and her personal belongings were found there after her death. Hansen's connections to the underworld of Hollywood and his reputation as a womanizer cast a dark shadow over him. Although Hansen was repeatedly questioned by police and was a prime suspect for a time, there was no concrete evidence leaking him to the murder and he was never charged. Robert Red Mann, a married salesman, was the last person confirmed to have seen Elizabeth alive. He admitted to dropping her off at the Biltmore Hotel on January 9, 1947. Manley's inconsistent statements and nervous demeanor during questioning aroused suspicion. He was subjected to rigorous interrogation and a polygraph test, which he passed. Manley's alibi was verified, and he was eventually cleared of any involvement in the murder, leaving the police with more questions than answers. Dr. Walter Bailey a Los Angeles surgeon, became a suspect posthumously. His daughter believed he was involved in the murder, citing his surgical expertise and a possible connection to Elizabeth's family. Bailey's residence was near the crime scene, and his medical background matched the precision of the mutilation. However, Bailey died in 1948, and there was no substantial evidence linking him to the crime at the time of the investigation. The case against him remained speculative and unresolved. Joseph A. Dumais, a soldier stationed at Fort Dix, New Jersey, confessed to the murder of Elizabeth Short. His confession, however, 
was riddled with inconsistencies, and he was later found to have been on base at the time of the murder. DeMace's false confession added to the chaotic swirl of suspects and was eventually dismissed by investigators. Numerous other individuals came under scrutiny over the years, each casting their own shadow over the case. Some of these suspects included Orson Welles, a famed filmmaker who was speculated to be involved due to his interest in gruesome subjects and some circumstantial evidence. This theory, however, never gained substantial traction. Woody Guthrie, a folk singer, was briefly considered a suspect due to a misunderstanding about his whereabouts and activities. Patrick S. O'Reilly, a physician with a criminal record and connection to the L.A. underworld, was also considered but never formally charged. The myriad of suspects, each with their own tangled web of secrets, only deepened the enigma of Elizabeth Short's brutal murder. Despite extensive investigations, interrogations, and a plethora of theories, the truth remains an elusive phantom, forever haunting the streets of Los Angeles. The shadows continue to whisper their tales, and the case of the Black Dahlia remains one of the most infamous and unsolved mysteries in American history. Perhaps the most notorious of all, Dr. George Hodel, a man whose name still sends shivers down the spine those familiar with the case. Dr. George Hodel was a man of considerable wealth and influence in Los Angeles. A brilliant yet deeply troubled physician, Hodel's name became synonymous with the dark secrets of Hollywood. His son, Steve Hodel, a retired LAPD detective, later claimed that his father was indeed the Black Dahlia killer citing evidence from his own investigations. Steve discovered photographs resembling Elizabeth Short among his father's possessions and found incriminating entries in George's journals. Despite these revelations, George Hodel was never formally charged due to the lack of direct evidence at the time. In the dimly lit corridors of history, one man's quest for answers stands out against the backdrop of the Black Dahlia case. Steve Hodel has dedicated his life to unraveling the mystery surrounding Elizabeth Short's brutal murder. Dr. George Hodel, a prominent physician with a taste for the surreal, and also Steve's father, becomes a central figure in Steve's investigation. Examining crime scene photos, Steve notices surgical similarities between the technique that was used and the technique his father learned that led him to suspect his father's involvement. The letters from the supposed killer, known as the Black Dahlia Avenger, further resemble his father's handwriting, adding a chilling layer to the puzzle. Returning to Los Angeles, Steve meticulously collects evidence linking his father to the murder documenting his findings in books, play, and a blog. Despite facing both supporters and critics, Steve's commitment to uncovering the truth remains unwavering, painting a picture of a seasoned detective accusing his own father of a notorious unsolved murder. Steve's exploration into his father's fascination with surreal art and his social circles reveals a vivid backdrop against which Elizabeth Short's life played out. Dr. Hodel's involvement in the Surrealist Ball, an extravagant gathering of artists and intellectuals, suggests a connection between Short's world and the enigmatic realms of Surrealism. The media's attention intensifies, casting a harsh light on Steve's investigation. Allegations and accusations fly, creating a tempest of speculation that threatens to 
overshadow the truth. Despite the challenges, Steve persists, re-examining evidence, interviewing witnesses, and revealing hidden truths buried beneath the layers of time. As the investigation unfolds, Steve's narrative unfolds over decades, presenting evidence to prove his father's connection to the crime. Despite claims of resolution, the lack of concrete evidence and enduring mysteries continue to fuel debates and investigations. In the shadows of uncertainty, Steve's pursuit of the truth stands as a testament to the enduring allure of the Black Dog case. His story is not just one of investigation, but of a son's quest to confront his father's dark legacy, casting a long shadow over the city of angels. In the dark underbelly of the Black Dog case lies a chilling enigma, a series of letters purportedly penned by the killer. These missives, dripping with macabre details and cryptic messages, wove a web of terror around the investigation, obscuring the truth in a haze of deception. Written in a taunting tone, the letters claimed responsibility for Elizabeth Short's murder, signing off as the Black Dahlia Avenger. Each letter, a macrobe dance of words, promised further violence and hinted at a mind twisted by darkness. What made these letters truly chilling was their apparent knowledge of details not made public, leading many to speculate that the writer was indeed the killer. However, skeptics pointed to the possibility of a clever hoax designed to mislead and confuse investigators. The letters cast a long shadow over an already terrified public, adding to the mystery and fear that gripped Los Angeles. Despite extensive analysis and investigation, the true authorship of the letters remains a mystery. Their words echoing through the decades like a haunting melody from a bygone era. In the realm of noir, where shadows reign and truth is a fleeting specter, the letters of the Black Dahlia case stand as a testament to the allure and unsolved mysteries, casting long shadows over the investigation and leaving us to ponder the darkness that lies within us all. The investigation into the Black Dahlia case was a meticulous unraveling of clues, a quest of truth in the shadows of deception. From the moment Elizabeth Short's lifeless form was discovered on January 15, 1947, the LAPD embarked on a journey into the darkest recesses of the human psyche. The scene at Lemert Park was a tableau of grim artistry, a puzzle of macrobe proportions. Elizabeth's body, meticulously severed and posed, bore the marks of a mind both meticulous and malevolent. The careful incisions, suggestive of surgical precision, hinted at a killer with the knowledge of anatomy. Perhaps a doctor or a skilled practitioner of the medical arts. The autopsy further deepened the mystery, revealing the extent of Elizabeth's suffering. The cause of death, attributed to hemorrhage and shock from the extensive lacerations, painted a picture of a victim subjected to unspeakable cruelty. The meticulous nature of the mutilations spoke of a killer with a methodical mind, a mind that sought not just to end a life, but to create a mockery of a masterpiece. The LAPD, under the guidance of seasoned detectives, pursued every lead with tenacity, reminiscent of the great sleuth of fiction. They combed through witness statements, analyzed forensic evidence, and interrogated suspects with a precision that mirrored the meticulousness 
of the crime itself. Yet, despite their efforts, the truth remained elusive. A shadowy figure lurking just beyond their grasp. The media frenzy that followed the case was akin to a feeding frenzy with newspapers and radio stations clamoring for the latest details. Elizabeth Short's tragic story became fodder for sensationalized headlines, turning her into a mythic figure, a symbol of a bygone era of glamour and intrigue. The media circus, while bringing attention to the case, also added a layer of complexity with false leads and hoaxes clouding the investigation. The Black Dahlia case remains one of the most alluring and enduring mysteries in criminal history. A puzzle that has confounded some of the greatest minds in law enforcement. The lack of clear motive, the absence of a definitive suspect, and the sheer brutality of this crime have made it a tantalizing enigma, a mystery that continues to captivate and haunt to this day. Elizabeth's brief foray into the world of Hollywood added a layer of intrigue to the case. Rumors circulated of connections to Hollywood insiders, of parties and scandals that hinted at a darker side to the glitz and glamour of Tinseltown. The allure of fame and fortune mixed with the seedy underbelly of the entertainment industry created a narrative that captivated the public's imagination. In death, Elizabeth Short became an enigma, a figure of fascination and speculation. Some portrayed her as a femme fatale, a seductress who met a tragic end at the hands of a jealous lover. Others saw her as an innocent victim a young woman whose life was cut short by forces beyond her control. The truth, as always, lay somewhere in between. Obscured by the shadows of myth and legend, eyewitness reports of Elizabeth Short's last sightings, January 9, 1947, Biltmore Hotel, Los Angeles. Witnesses report seeing Elizabeth Short at the Biltmore Hotel on January 9, 1947, where she was allegedly seen wearing a black suit and matching hat. She was observed using the lobby's telephone and appeared to be waiting for someone. January 9th through 14, 1947, various locations. Reports suggest that Elizabeth Short was seen at various locations around Los Angeles in the days leading up to her disappearance, including at a downtown bar and at a bus depot. Witnesses describe her as appearing nervous and agitated. January 14, 1947. A witness claims to have seen Elizabeth Short in the company of a man on January 14, 1947, the day before her body was discovered. The witness described the man as being well-dressed and an average height, but no further details about the sighting are available. January 15, 1947, last reported sighting. The last reported sighting of Elizabeth Short was on January 15, 1947, the day her body was found. A witness reported seeing her at Crown Grill, a bar on South Olive Street in Los Angeles. She was allegedly in the company of a man who was described as tall and thin with dark hair. These eyewitness reports provide valuable insight into Elizabeth Short's movement in the days leading up to her disappearance and murder. However, despite these sightings, the circumstances surrounding her death remain a mystery and her killer has never been brought to justice. Shadowhunters, journey with me into the depths of mystery and intrigue surrounding the Black Dolly case as we delve into the shadows of queries and speculation. Let us ponder the enigmatic questions that surround this haunting tale. What was the significance of the phone call Elizabeth made before her disappearance? 
Could it have been a cry for help, a final goodbye, or something more sinister? How did the killer manage to dismember Elizabeth with such surgical precision? Was it the work of a skilled surgeon? Or did the killer possess another form of anatomical knowledge? A question that may narrow our list of suspects. Who among Elizabeth's acquaintances harbored dark secrets or hidden grudges? The lives she touched form a web of relationships that might conceal the identity of her murderer. What dark secrets of Hollywood's underbelly might Elizabeth have stumbled upon? The world of glitz and glamour often hides shadows where danger lurks. Was there a witness to the crime who remains silent to this day? Someone who saw something or heard something or was compensated for their silence okay, regarding some sure. That could unravel the entire mystery. Could more than one person be involved? The amount of detail that went into this grotesque dismemberment and draining of fluids. Do you think it was the work of one sadistic killer or multiple suspects? Okay, what Black drove Dahlia. the primary suspects in the case? such as Dr. George Hodel, to be considered by the authorities, and even his own son. What motives and connections did they all have to Elizabeth that made them prime suspects? Okay, what Elizabeth pieces sure. of evidence were overlooked or dismissed by the original investigators? Okay, the, the passage of time might bring new light to forgotten clues. Who were the individuals Elizabeth tried to contact in the days leading up to her death, did they know something crucial about her fate? What about the cryptic postcard sent to the press with Elizabeth's personal belongings? Could it have been a clue from the killer or a red hair? As we ponder these enigmatic questions, the truth lies obscured in the shadows, awaiting those brave enough to uncover it. In the shadowed annals of crime, where echoes of the past reverberate, the tale of Elizabeth Short, the Black Dahlia, reaches its haunting conclusion. Yet, as the final curtain falls and the stage empties, the enigmatic puzzle of her life and death remains unsolved. A mystery that defies time and reason, waiting to be unraveled by those bold enough, fierce enough, and courageous enough to venture into the depths of mystery and unravel the secrets that lie within. So shadow hunters, as we depart from the dimly lit streets and murky alleys of the Black Dahlia store and exit the labyrinthine corridors of intrigue and deception in the noir syndicate, let us raise a glass to the fall and toast to the enigma of inky noir Champagne Mysteries, where the truth is the elusive prize and justice the final destination. Good night.